On this episode of Living the Dream, Captain Jimmy and Louisa travel to the Bahamas for some diving and lobster action. After diving with the sea turtles, the crew heads to some lobster condos, and the lobsters are everywhere. And their luck is no different when it comes to some last-minute trolling. My gosh, that's a big fish. Oh, it's a nice mutt. Check that out. This is Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson. Presented by Salt Life. Live salty. The Bahamas, a remarkable chain of over 700 islands and keys, spread out over some 500 miles in the tropical Atlantic. Among them, in the easternmost water sits Middle Key, a two-acre privately owned paradise just off the coast of Harbor Island. After a scenic boat ride, Jimmy and Louisa arrive with the setting sun and marvel at the Bahamian retreat they'll call home for the week. Atop this small refuge, sit two beautiful homes, the cottage and the main house, both perfect getaways for vacationers, travelers, and sportsmen alike. Both homes boast five-star amenities, and the main house, Jimmy and Louise's home for the week, has an outdoor heated pool and shower that overlook the beautiful Caribbean waters. Inside, there's an open kitchen and dining room with stainless steel appliances, granite countertops, and plenty of seating and four spacious bedrooms, each with an incredible ocean view and ensuite bathroom. No matter the reason you come to the Bahamas, your stay at Middle Key will be unforgettable. You'll get the privacy and luxury you deserve in one of the most scenic places on the planet, famous for its pink sand beaches and turquoise waters. And if it's world-renowned fishing and diving you're after, the beaches and nearby depths are riddled with tournament-winning fish and captivating wrecks. To book your stay today, visit LuxuryIslandBahamas.com. After a night spent in luxury, Jimmy and Louisa rose early the next morning refreshed and took the boat out to take in the Bahamian sights. So after we checked in at Middle Key and got settled in, we decided to take the boat out and see what we could get into. Not far from the key, there was a little line of rocks sticking out of the water, and uh, we decided to just anchor up right there and swim around and see what was in the water. All right, time to check out the pretty waters right here. There were turtles everywhere. Little turtles, medium-sized turtles, bigger turtles. There were just sea turtles all over the place around these rocks. It was very impressive how many were there. Sea turtles live in almost every ocean around the world, but the Bahamas shallow waters and reef flats offer them a perfect environment in which to forage. All seven species of them are considered endangered. But the Bahamian waters are generally safer for them due to a lack of commercial and illegal fishing, which is their biggest threat. And with tourism making up more than half of this region's GDP, it's no wonder these turtles have become so friendly. It was a lot of fun to see Louisa swimming up and down in the water with the turtles and just having a good time out there. And it seemed like the turtles enjoyed our attention as well because they didn't leave us. They just kept kind of swimming with us and swimming at the cameras and going down and up beside us. It's almost like they were used to people. There was also a lot of coral in the area with a lot of tangs and little butterfly fish and angel fish. And there were some lobsters there. We even saw a couple lionfish. There was all kinds of life on this little piece of rock just sticking out of the water. If you're into taking photos and getting videos of cool things like that, I mean, that right there is worth the trip to Middle Key because there are turtles all around it. And to have them that close to the key, I mean, you're talking a five minute boat ride away and there are turtles all over the place that you can swim with and get pictures with, just have a good old time with. 
And it was a great way to start because it was one of the first things that we saw after we came to the island. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by Salt Life, Live Salty. Angle Coolers, the original high performance cooler. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. ACR Electronics, the science of survival. And by American Fishing Wire. For Jimmy and Louisa, it's day two in the Bahamas on Middle Key, a private island with two incredible vacation homes and breathtaking views. Today, they've decided to go lobstering in the local bays, a common recreational activity in these waters. From August 1st till March 31st, tourists and locals can dive down in depths of five to over 100 feet to pull Bahamian lobsters, also known as spiny lobsters, from a condo, a flat man-made structure that sits a foot above the seabed and provides a sustainable habitat for the lobsters. So our lobster day was going to be a full day of catching lobster for us and the crew and some of the staff for Middle Key. So we went out with one of the friends of one of the guys that worked at Middle Key, his name was Rocky, and he's a lobstering guy in the area, and he had a couple condos, so he's like, hey, let's go out and check out some of these condos and see if there's any lobsters on them. Hopefully it'll be uh, plenty in there. We saw some nice lobsters when I was just swimming around in the water, but I didn't take a real close look at them yet. So again, hopefully there's some big ones. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go down there and just grab them with my gloves. And uh, if any of them get out in the open, Louise is gonna take the uh, neuritic lionfish pole spear, and instead of having a three prong on it, we have a slip tip on there so she can shoot the lobsters because you're allowed to do that here in the Bahamas. And uh, we're gonna try to get as many as we can for us and the crew today. So hopefully we'll have a good time out there lobster and have, uh, have plenty for dinner. So I'll Good see day. you guys in the water. And hopefully with a, come back with a bunch of lobsters. So we got over to his first condo and there were lobsters everywhere under it. I just saw all the antennas sticking out of the side of that condo and I knew they were loaded up in there. Louisa was using the neuritic lionfish pole spear with the slip tip to shoot the lobsters because you're allowed to shoot them in the Bahamas and it's actually recommended because you're going to hurt them less, you're going to break less legs off, less will get away. You can just shoot them, get them in the boat and go down and get another big lobster. You just have to know what you're looking for. Got that one on the pole spear. And then I grabbed a lobster that was out in the open. And then Louisa went down and shot another one. And that was a pretty good sized lobster that she just caught. And then I grabbed another lobster. After I grabbed that lobster, I went ahead and started swimming it back to the boat. And then we moved to a spot where there was some just coral heads and rocks and we just started bouncing around looking for random spots to see if there were lobster in the rocks. And one of the coral heads we'd stopped on had several big lobsters in it. And then I shot a really big lobster off of that rock. is always great. I have never been and not found lobsters. That's one of my favorite parts about the Bahamas is that there's always lobsters and there's always conch and they're usually not hard to find. That's a good one. Look at that monster. Holy cow. What a big boy. That is. Holy smoke. That's a freaking lobster. Look at this here. I know there's some big ones down there. 
Like he said, this is just a baby, I guess. Even though it's the biggest one in the boat so far, yeah. there's some big ones. And that tip is in there good. So thick, I can barely get my hand around it. Here it comes. There it is. Got it. There he is. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Look at the size of that thing. That's a big lobster right there. Look at the size of that tail. Holy cow. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Live in the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson is made possible by CNH Lures. Be a winner with CNH Lures. Plantation on Crystal River, the place to stay and play along Florida's nature coast. Cayman Islands Angling Club. Come experience sport fishing in paradise. And by Salt Life. Live salty. Before the break, Jimmy and Louisa headed out to dive at some local condos, and the lobsters were everywhere. After clearing the first condo, they decided to search some coral heads before hitting the second, and Jimmy shot a massive lobster. That's a good one! Look at that monster! That's the other reason the neuritic pole spear is so handy to have when you're lobstering, is that it keeps you from getting stung by lionfish because you can just shoot them and pull the lobsters out instead of sticking your whole arm into the rocks or wherever you may be sticking your arm into and potentially getting stung by a lionfish or getting bit by something that could be in the rocks. Hi, girl. All right. You see again what she's using is that, uh lionfish pole spear from Neuritic with a slip tip on it. It's better for the uh, lobsters. And here it is right here. Not a real big pole spear. Perfect for lobsters. Perfect for little snapper. Things like that. Hogfish. Awesome. That next rock had a lot of lobster in it as well. Louisa saw a really nice sized lobster in there. She got set up and breathed up and ready to go down and shoot it. We take our time on the surface because it does take up a lot of energy swimming in the current and floating and just staying over top of the rock. And you wanna go down and position yourself right so that you have the most time possible in case the lobster crawls up in the side of the rock or in case there's a lionfish or something there. You don't wanna rush it and just stick your arm up in a rock and grab a lobster. And then Louisa swam down, got her eyes on the lobster and shot it but she couldn't pull it out of the hole because it turned sideways on her. So she left the neuritic pole spear down there in the rock and swam back up to the surface for a minute. I got him. Take a few breaths, he's not going anywhere. That was exactly what she should have done, is swim up, get another breath, and go back down for the lobster. and then she brought it back to the boat to take it off. It's work sometimes getting that out. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's all tame, but it was like a shot. This lobster was in a hole, and I just saw it just like sitting there. And it was a really good sized lobster from where I saw it, so I just shot it. Yeah, and it's a slip tip, so when Louisa's taking the lobster off of that slip tip, you see that she has to push the tip back through the lobster to get the lobster off of that string, that wire, that cable that it's hanging on. There you go. There you go. Woo! Big lobster. It's trying to get away. Woo! That was a good dive. So we got a bunch of lobsters. Uh, they were pretty good size. And uh, all we have left there were smaller lobsters. So now we're gonna go to the next spot and see if we can find some decent size ones. The crew feels confident that there'll be plenty of lobster to go around back at Middle Key tonight. But they decide to hit a second condo before heading back in. Condos, unlike traps and other man-made devices, are a sustainable way to keep the lobster population high, so there's no harm in going after a strong bounty. 
we got to the next condo and they were everywhere again. So Louisa and I got in the water, we just started grabbing lobsters as fast as we could and bringing them in the boat. Then Louisa went down again to grab a lobster. And that was a pretty good sized lobster right there. And then I caught a pretty good sized lobster as well. Another nice one. There's some good ones in there, man. There was no shortage of lobsters out there. We got plenty of lobster for dinner that night, and it was a wonderful afternoon catching lobsters, that's for sure. Woo, what a day. We got what we came for, guys. Mission accomplished. After clearing out two packed condos, Jimmy and Louisa have plenty of lobsters to feed themselves, the camera crew, and the staff back at Middle Key. So they head back to the island to prep them for dinner. All right, guys, so we just got done lobstering. We're out here, back at Middle K, and uh, it's breaking up the tails. All we really have to do to get these off is just take it like this and just twist the head and the tail in opposite directions, and that'll happen. And uh, of course, you want to take that poop line out. If you were gonna, you know, take it out, you can use their antenna to do that. We're actually gonna split these tails later on when we grill them and cook them and stuff, so we're not gonna have to worry about it too much. I got most of that out when I pulled it. They can stick the antenna in and pull the, uh, the poop and stuff out that you don't want. Look at this monster here. Holy cow. It's probably one of the biggest ones of the day. Monster. Look at that. And we're keeping the heads too because we're gonna crush these up later on. We're gonna use them to catch mutton snapper, to lure other fish in there. It's excellent chum. So we definitely don't want to throw those away. And this is probably about a five or six pound lobster. That was a monster. Bahamas is an amazing place to catch lobsters too. It's easy to do. And uh, out here at Middle K, they have different people that they can uh, refer you to. We had an amazing captain out there on the boat with us today, Rocky. He put us on some lobster on the different uh, the hotels and condos and stuff. We're getting it. We are getting it. Definitely has no for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Absolutely. We eat these for the next few days. We'll be back for more Living the Dream right after the break. Jimmy and Louisa are in the Bahamas staying at Middle Key, a luxury vacation spot just off Harbor Island. Before the break, they were prepping lobsters they pulled from some local condos for a big meal. But before the day is through, they're hoping, as always, to squeeze a little bit of fishing in. It was getting late in the day and we didn't have a whole lot of time left, so we decided to just go ahead and jump in the boat, grab some diving lures, and try to troll just like I do in Crystal River. We're going to try doing a little trolling this afternoon. I'm just rigging up a couple diving lures with some AFW hard wire. The only wire I had in my box is this 32 pound, which is uh, quite a bit lighter than I was wanting to use because there's some huge barracudas and stuff in there. But I mean, this is tough stuff, so I feel pretty confident that it's going to get the job done and I'm just uh, tying one end up to a barrel swivel, an AFW barrel swivel, and then I have a snap swivel on the other side. And we'll just use these uh, diving lures here and troll them around this deeper channel and see what we can run into. We know there's some black grouper in there, there's some mutton snappers, there's a few other things, of course a lot of barracudas, so that's why we're putting the wire on. We'll see if we get lucky tonight and catch something uh, really good to bring home to eat. There has to be something there. How sick would it be to get a gigantic Kubera? It is possible. Definitely possible. It didn't take long and Louisa was hooked up. Fish on, Louisa. Oh, Hi. Woo, seems like we got one. It wasn't a very big fish that she got. It was just a little yellow jack, but hey, you know what? It pulled a little line. Fun way to spend a little bit of time in the afternoon. Got some bait. <laughs> a little baby yellow jack. Oh, there he goes. That's the lure and that's the fish, same size. <laughs> Bye. And after she let that yellow jack go, we went ahead and got the lines back out, turned around, and started trolling through that same area again. 
not long after that, I got a hit, and it was a really good fish. My gosh, that's a big fish. I kind of thought that it might be a Kubera or a big mutton snapper, because it was pulling hard, and I had the drag tightened down pretty tight, because there was a lot of rocks in the area, and I didn't want to get pulled down in the rocks. And we just got the diving lures down. We got some 15-foot divers, and I just decided to troll the channel here, just like I do at home for grouper, to see what I could come up with. And I have something that's just digging down. Oh, it's a nice mutton. It's a real nice mutton. Check that out. Woo! All right, dog. There he is. <laughs> hey, Louisa. Nice Look fish. at this. I was so stoked when I saw that it was a mutton snapper. I mean, I couldn't have been happier. It was the perfect fish to catch that afternoon. Nailed him on a diving lure. Let's try to get this hook out. Do you like the wire? Yeah, hold that lure so he doesn't sling it and hook me. Thank you. Guys, this is exciting. Not having a clue where to go, what to do. Just coming out here with a couple hours left in the evening to try to catch some fish and to troll up a mutton snapper like this. Just in the <laughs> channel oh on a God. diving lure. Anybody that says you need fluorocarbon for mutton snapper, let me show you something. Pop that thing open. Look at this. I'm using wire leader. That's 32 pound AFW a wire leader in case we had a barracuda cut us off. Mutton snapper nailed it with wire and everything. Unbelievable. Wow. Well, we'll be eating good tonight, huh, Louisa? Oh, for sure. Look at that. Check out those colors. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, couldn't be happier than that right there. That's what it's all about. It was perfect. I mean, I was so happy. Louisa was happy. The whole crew was happy because we were going to have conch, lobster, and mutton snapper for dinner that night. For more fishing and diving action, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter at Captain Jimmy Nelson. Living the Dream with Captain Jimmy Nelson was brought to you by Salt Life. Live salty.